we're going to be in progress. Um, today we're going to just do our classical yoga to feel good. But I will speak more too, because you know you can do our practice and you can speak to different things. So today I'm going to speak to more about the position of your baby and where they are in your body, because the positioning of your baby is so critical to birth going easier and well um smoother let's say so if you were feeling your tummy right now you can all you know 16 weeks you can imagine like palpating your belly you know yourself and just feeling like where the spine is where it's all really hard or where there's a big bump that's going to be a head or a bum you know so it's often we have to like lie back and relax our tummies on the sofa but start to tune in all throughout your day and feel your tummy and check where your baby is. Notice where their sofa is, right? Where they wanna hang out. And so what we really want our babies to begin in is this left side for labor, left occiput anterior. I'm gonna go back a wee bit. So they're lying on the left side of your body with the occiput, the base of their skull in your anterior, the front, rather than the posterior around the back, yeah? So left occiput anterior means they're down like this. And when they're down like this, they tend to tuck their chin a lot more. And then the back of the head just fits really snug on the cervix. The back of the head then comes through the cervix. It's a much narrower amount of space required. So it opens more evenly and easily. If they're coming through with their brow, the side of their head, so it's brow presentation, asynclitic. These things make labor a lot more challenging. You know, it's much harder this diameter coming through than that one on the side. Shoulders can get in the way and all sorts of stuff. Depends. There's a lot of things that can go on inside the jigsaw puzzle and the funnel of the pelvis and the birth canal and with your baby. Without going into all the other details like posterior, right side lying, transverse, all those sorts of things, we talk more about them in she births. But the key sort of four elements that we can get from our yoga practice is inverting the body, relaxing, aligning. These three, well, the four I was going to say was breathing, but relaxing and breathing could go together. We could say three. So it's inverting, relaxing slash breathing and aligning. These three things are going to work to bring your baby into a more optimal position. Often they don't go on that side because we've got tension in the belly or because our pelvis is a little twisted. And if it's a little twisted, they might sort of get pushed a bit more to the right side or push more into posterior or forced to go across the belly because they can't fit the width of a head down. Yeah, or send a foot down because that's narrower than a head. So little twists will make less space in the funnel, right? So we've got the funnel, twisty, all of a sudden less room. So we want to just make as much space as we can in the pelvis, align the hips as much as possible, and you want to relax the belly so the fascial adhesions are gone, and then your babies are much more likely to begin in that left occiput anterior. When they're in left occiput anterior, all they have to do then is just a tiny quarter turn to come out and down. If they start on the right, because contractions actually move, from left to right, they've got what's called a left obliquity. They'll go from the right and they tend to go around through posterior. I don't have my baby here, it's in Sydney. That's why I'm using my hands. And then they come out, which is a long, hard posterior labor, right? Left occiput anterior is what we're aiming for. When we invert the body, the ligaments will hang, we soften the fascia, but also the internal ligament structures that connect the pelvis to the uterus, and the pelvic floor, all of them by hanging, by traction, will soften as well. But bring your breath today into the pelvis, into the belly. Make it as big, as expansive as you can in these parts. Really feel the stretching going on. And this will align and open yeah, everything that needs to happen. Does it make sense? Yeah? Thumbs up? Zoom thumbs. <laughs> all right. So let's go. Let's start in a child's pose today or something different. So come into your child's pose. Someone's on. Whoever is R is in as the speaker. How does that happen? Does someone want to explain that to me? 
in the sleeve. What does that mean? Okay, so in your child's pose, you can, I'll just go like this. I don't know why, Rebecca, you are the speaker for some reason. In, in your child's pose, just let those knees open nice and wide. And it's great if you've got a bolster and you can then just allow your chest to rest in your head, to turn to the side. There we go, got it, pin. All right. If you don't have a bolster, you might just roll up a little blanket. You could put a couple of pillows in front. You could just use your hands under your head or you could put a brick. And it might be uncomfortable at first in your legs, but that's not a bad thing. But if it's really crazy, then you need a pillow between your butt and your ankles perhaps. So just use whatever you need. And just really allow your body to just land here. Big breaths into the belly. Inhale, really just feel the belly blow up like a beautiful big balloon. You might get to the top of your breath and just like inhale and hold there for a moment. And then maybe just exhale, sigh, and just let everything kind of fall out of your mouth. even feel in your child's pose as you inhale the spine actually lengthens it's like the spine is breathing and if you inhale the tail grows further downwards and the top of your head top spine also reaches further up into the occiput i feel like the breathing into your spine is going breathing into your belly lengthening the spine softening the belly waist even expanding and you even feel like you are inhaling and widening your hips exhale let them soften inhaling letting the sacrum just expand a little bit more with your breath pelvic floor, stretching to and then take two more really full body breaths where you're just breathing belly, back, side, pelvis, pelvic floor, even into the head, your whole body just breathing like a baby. And just repeat an affirmation with that last breath. As you inhale, I open. As you exhale, I let go. And then gently just press your hands into the floor, lift your body upright. We'll come back to that space. That's like a safe space an opening space, a relaxing space there in child's pose. We're going to come around, give your legs a little shake on the floor, bounce the hemis, the calves, or the ankles. Before you get out of bed in the morning, this is a great thing to do, just roll the ankles, get the lymphatic system moving, pulse the feet up and down. And even before you go to bed at night, it's great to just turn around and put your legs up the bed head and put some pillows under your hips, which will find you today, find you more inverted. 
So come around into Sukhasana to begin box pose, your feet are underneath your knees. Right, we're sitting like this, we're trying to get those feet underneath, the knees, it'll feel a little weird at first, and then pull back on your toes, and then just walk your hands and fingertips towards it on the side so you can see a little bit more. I'm trying to keep the back really straight. If your belly's really in the way, sit on something, blanket, perhaps fold it over, and as you come down, you might just like to rock and sway. Feel the back and the hips just relaxing a little bit more, like stretching. But you can use our practice today just to invite more breath down, down, down into the body. Deep, deep, deep into the pelvis, into the womb. You've got the womb, you might still be able to, depending on the size of your tummy, walk your hands to each side and just stretch a bit more. It doesn't matter if you're up here. Still get the stretch. What it matters is that you're just feeling your body today, feeling your breath, feeling the legs, feeling open, feeling that letting go. Again, take one more big breath in through your nose, inhale, open, exhale, let go. Gently just walk your hands in, lift the body upright. Remember which leg is in front, bring your hands behind, straighten your legs out, and then just see it back into your hands, bend them a little bit more and stretch open the chest. Yeah, just turn the head a bit. Arm is back, arch your back a little bit more. Right, swap the legs over the other way. And when you're ready, come forwards and just find that little sweet spot. Add any movements, just close your eyes, feel your breath. Soften the shoulders, soften the face. And feet, you can't breathe any deeper into your belly and your pelvis. Take the breath down, take it wider, just a little bit more. Hmm. You walk your hands in when you're ready. Take that same hand stretch that we did before, just leaning back into your hands, stretching the legs out, or go a little stronger and ground your feet and take a little tabletop from the hands and the feet. Maybe you can hold the head back. Two breaths. Cross the legs again so you're comfy. Up into prayer. Press the eyes and really stretch down to your hips and reach up through the crown of your head. Take the chin into the neck, feel your breath in the bottom of the neck. Take one long arm to be in practice. Inhale, fully. Bowing the head to the heart, to the womb, to the earth, surrendering fully. 
Reach the fingers up to the third eye, then down to your lips, down to your heart, down to your baby heart. And really gently release. Put the arms out to the side, roll your thumbs right back. Drop the shoulders down. When you're ready to be breath in, reach the arms all the way up, look to your thumbs. Try and use your hands to wiggle and pull your body even higher. You get that stretch through your intercostal muscle. And then breathe out, stretch the arms all the way out and down. Get two more big breath in and wide. Good, cut out. Ugh. Let it go of the day. Big days in the wide. Hands have release. The mouth of the nose, then take your right hand up to the side, reach your left arm up and over, and stretch to the sideways. So we're coming into the psoas and the obliques and the abdominals and the intercostals and your diaphragm. It's all really important for the relaxation response to relax these parts of the body, particularly psoas and diaphragm. Also, really important to help your baby come into a more optimal position to make that tension that sideways. So lift up and take it to the other side. Round the hips so you don't just lift up, you pull the hips down and really actively push down or reach through. You can even twist the hand around, pull the shoulder from the ear and bring the breath into the side body. It's a beautiful squeeze for those kidneys and the spleen adrenals that we can't twist as much, but we can compress as we rejuvenate those in the organ. The arm up again. This time, take your arm across and bring it down over the knee. And as you breathe in, just sweep that arm, open the heart, look back. And then as you exhale, look at your curl, pop your chin. Good more inhale. And you're stretching out a wing like you're a big bird with lots of feathers. Exhale as it were. In, open. Exhale, curl through. Take hold of that knee and swing your right fingertips behind. And then just twist to your upper body. So keep rooting down through your sit bones, drop your shoulders, turn the body around with a couple of breaths. Stretch your eyes around the nose. Gently turn the head around, gently release, lean back. Let's just swap the legs over. Take this hand off to the side again and then stretch your wings out with that inhale. Just open, squeeze and stretch through the intercostals. Keep your eyes open. Hold at the end of the inhale, if that feels good, that's a great way to build energy in the body. If the energy is really low, you can inhale. You hold at the top, two, three, four, and that will help with oxygenation as well. Hand comes down on the knee, that third time, you take a nice twist. A little taller, breathe a little wider, twist a little bit further. Gently turn the head around, release. We're going to do the same arm movements, extending the breath. So, great again for low arm. You're going to come around though and tuck the toes under and sit up onto the heels of your feet. Gets too much, you lift up and try and come back down again. Try and lean back into it, try and soften the shoulders. And just take three breaths here, not doing anything, just closing the eyes. Noticing, feeling.
to be to that one. So gently come forwards, tap your feet in the floor. Sit back down onto the heels, so feet flat if you can. You can always put something underneath your bum if it's too much. So now we're going to do the breathing with an inhale retention. Okay, so you breathe out fully. Arms down, inhale wide, reach look up. Hold for the top. Two, three, four, exhale down. Maybe this time really out through the nose, tongue pressing up top top. Inhale wide. Hold the top of your breath. Two, three, four, exhale slow. One more time when you're ready. Number three, chest everything. Hold at the top. Exhale down. It works that relaxation response. Now a little eagle pose. Open the arms wide. So this is like instead of your cat cow, you're going to open and look up. And Oh, open your legs, so it's half your tail, tap your chin, grab your fingers together and pull forward. Two more. Make the breath longer. Inhale, open, maybe hold the breath. Let's see how we go one more time in the old toe crunch asana. See if you're able just in that stretch a little bit more now. So as you come in, close your eyes, take three conscious breaths. Immediately, I notice that my breath is longer and deeper. Gives me something more to focus on than just the feet. If I can relax the body, surrender a little more into it. Release, come forwards, tap the feet. Have a little wag of the tail. Roll your back. Open those knees. Take a little big hip circles, like rough and round. Okay. See. So this is a great one to do baby's posterior. The heaviest part of the baby is their back body. And we want the back, the spine, to be in your front, around the navel area, around that front side, the anterior. So by leaning forwards and doing this with the softest belly possible, which, you know, yoga is going to help as well. Roll your baby around. But even doing it on forearms, And just really letting the pelvis, the pelvic floor, just relax as much as possible. It's like the only thing that's moving your body is like the intention to move bones. So everything else can just kind of hang. And all those muscles will make even more room for their spine to come into the front. Breaths. Make room, make space, soften, release. Press back in a child's pose again. Go back into your safe place. You curl inwards. There's no one to think about but you, you and your baby. So we encourage our babies into an optimal position also through our mental encouragement or imagining. 
to us, but we focus on that communication with our babies, that connection. We can always talk to our babies, guide them into that best position. Or we can just relax and breathe and know that they're sharing that same bliss chemistry that you're experiencing. Really gently lift back up when you're ready. Ground your hands. And take a downward facing dog. Yeah? So tucking your toes under. Your feet are going to be wider than what you'd normally do in your down dog. If it's too much pressure on the lungs, remember you can put grips under your hands. If you feel uncomfortable in down dog, you're not so familiar with it. Just get nice firm bricks on the floor. If it feels that your hands are at the edge of the brick, just put edge next to your knees and then you've got less pressure and your heels will also get a little low so it's kind of like a, a nice cheat as well walk it out now we do help with optimal positioning through this inversion but not as good as coming off the sofa, but it's almost as good. So if you step your feet as wide as your mat and soften your knees and just have a little bounce here, just like bounce your bottom in the air, relax your belly, let the fascia release. It's like someone's got a rebozo on you, you might even just like wiggle the hips a little bit. Just soften, keep those knees relaxed. And then see if you can bring your head lower and relax your belly even more. If it's too much with knees bent, straighten the legs. Slow up a balloon in your belly. So gently release. Come back down. Knees nice and wide. Big toes together. Threading the needle. Right hand on the floor, left arm reaches up, inhale. Exhale, dive through. And now just hold here. Look up to chin, look up to the ceiling maybe, or close your eyes, maybe let your right hand come up around behind. So another nice inversion is just letting your belly soften here. So, so relaxed. We hang your body like this and ligaments can relax. The length can return. And your stretch lengthens. You're much more likely to get balance and love to start unwind. Gently ground to the right hand, lift the body up, left palm to the floor. When you're ready, right arm up, inhale. Have those little inhale retentions if you want, and exhale. Relax, hang, and breathe deep. And release and bring the body back up. Okay, so one more time, not for the dummies, but for the birth teaching. We're going to come into the toe crunch. All right, we're going to add one more element. So we did first time just breathing. Second time, after some breathing practice, opening the body. This time, keep the breath deep and add distraction. So you're going to clasp the fingers behind your back, straighten the arms, reach those hands up, and add some sensation up here so that you've got some distraction from your feet below and just notice how that feels. Uh, 
muscle tolerable in your feet. Focus on sensation, find an edge, stretch those hands a little higher if you've lost that edge with the chest stretch. Gently release, roll your shoulders. I know, my friends. So we're adding distraction and conscious deep breathing, right? Like what you do in the yeah. middle of the bottom. Up your toes, get wide, you know, hang forwards a little bit, just sway. You can have your elbows on your thighs. Just let the head hang. For the whole spine, little inversions, right? Slowly roll up or walk your hands up your legs if you need to. Good. Let's take a few more little movements to shake the body out a little bit, shake out your legs. Get a wriggle. Hands. <laughs> those toes out, let's take some Kundalini rolls. Take a big breath in, reach your arms forwards and up. And then exhale as you slow down. Heels are off the floor, hands to the mat, chins tucked, inhale. Hold the breath for a moment. The bottom goes up, exhale, roll away. Inhale, arms go wide, reach up. Exhale, come down. Inhale. And up, exhale. One more. Step to the front of your mat. Swing it a little higher. And we'll take some little sun salutes. So feet are nice and wide, your toes are turned out, hands in prayer. Close the eyes and feel both your feet so that you can just rock a little bit. Just notice which foot you're leaning into. You all just kind of lean into one leg more than the other. Just try and get the most of your feet front back, a whole lot of them, <laughs> nice and even and rounded. It won't be perfect and that's okay. Stillness again, connect with your heart, with your breath, with your baby, that aligning pelvis and leaning, optimizing the baby's position. Finish and exhale. And then let your inhale carry your arms wide and up. And exhale as you bend your knees, bring your hands down. You might put them onto two bricks if you need to. Yeah, you're going to lean to your left and step your right leg to the edge of the mat. Wriggle your feet further apart. You can bring your bricks or your hands inside and then you can rock. Big rock and swaying. So this is making a lot of position um, space the pelvic outlet between your sit bones, so the bottom of the pelvis. Baby goes through inlet, midlet, then outlet. Yeah, but still the lymphatic drainage that's going on, getting rid of any fluid retention is really important. And it's not like the baby's sitting there in the outlet right now, but we want to have elasticity in that part of the body so that it's easy. Those sit bones to broaden the tail to your back. Yeah. Good. Gently ground your hands. You can move into the downward dog if you feel like doing more inversions. You could just be on your hands and knees, roll around. You could invert with a little puppy dog pose if you could. Some kind of Position that works for you. But if you feel strong, 
and stay in the breath. Two more breaths. Good, come out with a little here and lean to the left. Lift your right leg up, you might have a little kick yawn by bending that knee. It feels really good. Just mindful of your pelvis. If it's not good, don't do it. Swing that right foot up to your hand, then bounce off the left. Elbows on your thighs. Distraction and breath. Contraction practice is using the thighs as the intense sensation. You know, we can't replicate the uterus muscles working in the cervix, the canal, all the stretching open. We just can't do it. This happens later. yourself through intense sensation with the breath, with movement, with distraction, bend your hands, go back. Drop your arms, deep breath in and reach up. Legs cover your hands down. And then up and then straight in. Connect with yourself, connect with your body. Other side, big breath in, wide, reach up. Exhale down. Sweep to the floor, left leg back, wiggle further, rock as you like. Don't like you're relaxing the pelvic floor as well, it's fun. Really gently, got your downward dog, hang out on all fours, whatever you feel like doing. Soften your knees, bottom higher, soften your belly if you can. Head, lean to your right, lift your left leg up and bend the knee if that feels nice for a moment. And then swing that leg up, bounce up, lift your other leg into contraction practice. Conscious breathing, conscious thinking, and conscious moving. Open, I let go. Be strong as an ox, I surrender. It works. You've got this. I trust birth, I trust my body. Really to if your eyes low, feel free to come out earlier. Should have said that before. Pretty intense. Drop your hands, take a big breath in wide, reach up. Legs up on your hands and turn your toes so they're pointing straight towards the front. One hand is parallel, one hand is up, one hand is forward. Shoulders relaxed. Very soft. Eyes closed. Deep in. Soften your knees, like just take the lock out of your knees if those knees bend. 
bringing the more balance into the pelvis and the legs here, yeah? which comes up into the ears. So bring your hands belly to your hips, wherever you like, and just roll the pelvis around. Really tilt and tuck it. So don't just sort of like move it along, but like go right around. Nice big ones and then change directions. You've got a paintbrush on your tailbone and your pubic bone. You're trying to get wider circle and you can lift every brush with your pelvis. Let's do some classical kind of anterior tilt. It's the tail tucking under. Very good for present, um, per preventing posterior. And then back again. So just the pelvis forward and back. Forward and back. The more you do that, the more you just lengthen out the ligaments that might be holding tight front and back and we just get more balance again. But then the tricky movement is a figure eight. So see if you can like go. <laughs> Side. Centers. And like make a sign of a bee. You might need to take the legs a little wider to bend those knees. And the hips will go up and down. And this is really good. Now we're getting sit bones rocking. They're going up and down like this. And also widening and stretching apart. Now change directions. Big wide opening. That pelvic outlet and pelvic floor. And great pain relief as well. Now come to feeling your feet again, closing your eyes, and hopefully just feeling more energy flow through both legs. It's much more even, even more grounded. And even imagine in your mind's eye from your tail when you've got a tail. Whatever tail, whatever animal comes to mind, just see that tail and imagine it. And notice how it feels to have a tail. In the tail weight of it, whether it touches the ground, whether it squishes, you know, whether it grounds you, pulls you down. And that's a really nice practice to do as well, is to help relax the pelvis, is to imagine you've got a sort of tail. You can see like a big red kangaroo or a little fox. It's a bit playful, but the grounding of being a kangaroo. Because we always have tails, right? Like our puppy dogs. <sighs> Shake those legs up. Let's take some standing poses. So I want you to take it easy. If you've got a brick, you might want to use that. If you've got something to the side that you want to hang on to, or you want to do this against the wall, you can, like, so you can have the wall behind you, right? I'm just going to put that screen down a wee bit more so you can see my map. So if we stand with our feet wide, we're going to do a triangle pose and then a half moon. Yeah, so this is a great one making more space across the sort of horizontals of these abs here. So I'm going to turn my right foot out to the side, my left toes inwards. I bring my hand onto this hip just to help sort of give information to the brain about where my body is in the space, right? That's helpful. You're going to reach out with your brick or just your hand and bring the hand down if you can behind. If it's too strong, just go in front on the brick or on the leg. If it's too much, just bend. And go like this and hold your tummy, yeah? Take a triangle pose to begin. You want length through the torso and then reach the arm up maybe. If it's too much, just look down, put the hand on the hip. You get lots of release through these side hips. If you're against the wall, that's good. Just use the wall, you can put your butt in the wall. Fingers, your feet don't generally touch the wall too much, just the back heel. Arm over here if you want a super strong stretch. Long pose, keep lifting up on those knees if the legs are straight. Bring your hand back onto your hip. You're going to bend that right knee. Grab your brick if you've got one. And then just kind of wriggle that right foot back a bit. So shorten the stance. We've got a short triangle pose. I'm going to have to go a bit further because I've got a chair right there. And then we're going to bring the brick forward. It's not directly in front of your toe. It's back slightly. So when you look down, you're going to go tippy toes of your left. Lift up. Arm 
come up. Ooh, half moon. And then we'll reach and stretch, push that heel away, pull the toe towards you. Yeah, and then try and roll that hip a little further up. So maybe you can bring your hand onto the left hip and just like a little lift up a little higher. Stretch and open. Some really advanced people might reach and bind. Hold, open the hip a little bit more. And then just roll that hip down and then roll it up one more time if you can. One more, down and up. And then well done, bend the knee, the legs come up. Plenty of space in the hips, shake it up. I was like, God, how am I going to teach them on Zoom? But we did it. Okay. Next slide again. Here we go. Vipshasana. Vipshasana. Here we go. Quick hand, bend elbow if you need, whatever variations. It is harder on Zoom. Obviously, I'm not in the room with you. So the duty of care is you to listen to your body. Use your breath, feel your feet, lengthen the waist, open the sleeve of the ribs. Bend your gently start hand on your hip. Bend, bend, bend. Bring the feet closer together. I'm just going this way because I need to on the screen. Bend that knee, let the grip come forwards. Bring the hand, just have with the hand, just get close behind. Your foot comes up. You can take that a nice big stretch with the arm and the leg. Both are balanced, keep the visual focus to the floor. It's a lot easier, obviously, when it's up. And then you might bring your hand onto that right hip and just roll that pelvis a little higher. So you're stretching between the front of your hips. So triangle that pubic bone, two hips, that lower belly. Hold that and then see if you can just roll the hip down twice. Down, open, closed. Big stretch, well done. Bend gently. Woohoo! Release. Pate in the hips and the flexors. <laughs> Shake it out. So good. Yeah. All right. When you come down to the floor and then just let all that area really soften and relax. So if you don't have a brick, you're going to need like a sand blanket, like a yoga blanket or a book, a big dictionary style book. You're going to come down to the floor. You're going to take a really nice pose for inverting the body. Okay, so you're going to come back down, ponytails out. You're not staying flat for very long, but have a grip or candy. Open your arms, wiggle your feet wider. And your hips and take a nice little wing straight up. Knees go one way, head the other. Inhale up, exhale, roll through. Back the buttocks. If it's too much pressure on your back, have the blanket folded up to you now underneath. Good. Ready? Wiggle your feet back to hip width apart. Bring your arms down. Let's just take a few little bridge poses. So just tuck your tail as much as your tummy allows. Roll up. Strong through your legs. Roll back down. Drop your tail. Tuck your tail. Roll up. This time we're going to roll up and you're going to take your brick or your book or a big folded blanket 
underneath your sacrum. Usually on the lowest height is plenty. If you're earlier on in pregnancy, then yeah, it feels great to go higher. If you want, you've got three heights there. That's pretty intense up there. Second one might feel good. So what we're going to do is let your feet walk out again and now let your knees open. So sort of like hanging here and we're going to pelvis, like really relax and open. So turn your lower back, you're going to rock a little bit. But what we want is this hanging, widening, softening. Let the ligaments hang. So if the baby was breached or transverse, this would be one of the best positions to be in. And this is like lying on the ironing board. Bit more pleasurable, I think, personally. Almost as good as a forward leaning inversion, but you can actually do this throughout your pregnancy with yoga. I think you don't need to do all the spinning baby stuff. I think it's great, it's great preventative, but honestly, like the amount of years I've been teaching yoga, people who do lots of this kind of yoga, the babies do end up being. Most of the time. You need a bit more help. And then wiggle your feet wider, you're on the blades. Take some big breaths, really breathe into your pelvis. Lift your belly as you inhale, puff it out. Soften and soft. Very soft and soft. Great for relaxation of the spine, so the heart can relax now in the nervous system. Face towards everything softening. Almost as good as the weight loss piece of the movie board. That's too much for your end point. Feel free to just come down, gently roll to the side. If you can handle it, take three or four more breaths. Whatever you need to do, your legs, your arms, your belly. Even try over the head a little bit, like a little waterfall, just to stretch the belly even more. One more breath, really savoring the shape, the softness of the belly, raising the pelvis. Again, you can't make the knees as wide, slowly squeezing towards one another, and really ground your feet. Just like we roll it up and down, you're going to tuck your tail and really squeeze the weight of your body as you lift up. You keep tucking your tail, engage your glutes, hold up for a second. Then you're just going to slowly roll down as much as your belly allows, elongating the spine nice and slow. The slower you come down, the better it is for your back. You let your tail drop. In spring wiper again if you want to. And just pause for a moment or bring your arm up beside your head and just roll over onto one side. Breathe here for a moment. Slowly press your hands into the floor, lift the body up. Let's do a final stretch. So if you've got a release, so it's up to you. If you want to call it floor two, you can either just bend one knee and take the other one out to the side. Full pose is the leg right back. Blanket, bricks, bolsters, 
and you bolster. Whenever you need a few more supports to the tummy, you might have to put a brick underneath. Okay. This might be where you get the stretch, but you might have to stay up okay, for that very important thing. to get a nice stretch across your glutes. So your psoas and your glutes will be the impact. The space and the ability to open the pelvis and therefore the position of your baby as well. Like the fight or flight muscles, the ones. Practice some more conscious breathing here. Um, pressing up into the top pellet of the mouth. Into a rasping sound in the back of the throat. Sometimes you're going to scan awareness through the body all the time. Soften the air you can. Particularly your face and your neck and your jaw and your shoulders. One more deep breath here. Long exhale and go. Put your hands into the floor. Up upright. Slowly take that time to adjust your legs. You can step back into dog or you can just let swing or make forward. Moment. Flat, what if you've got to do? And then move to the other side. maybe to the count of three or four to see if you can exhale twice as long. So you have three, exhale six, you have four, exhale eight. Just gently counting. There's no rush, there's no pressure. Just exploring your breath. Noticing how breathing can change our mental, emotional, Space. It's the physical.
in your conscious Last pose, last stretch, just savor every little sensation. The sensation means that it's free, the sense of space on the other side. Ready. So ten more. Slowly come up. Take a finishing posture that feels right for you. If you want to lie back down, if you can on your side. If you want to take a child's pose, that little safe space curling up. If you want to do um, a kind of chest opener, just to seal up your practice if you've got two bricks, or a client both masana. We didn't start like that today. We didn't do our traditional opening. You can take a back step. Find a little sweet spot in your chest. Drop the pillows. Let's let the legs open. Just the hip a little bit. Soften again in the bar. Eyes closed. Breath relax the body. The visualization. Imagining the golden light at the crown of your head. You can see that golden light all around the body. Head and brain and face, jaw and neck. Shoulders and your chest. Deep into your arms, rolling out through the fingers. All of the wounds and all the light through the veins and then softening and relaxing. Shift, hold it forward. Just back down through the legs. Flowing up the toes. Soothing the light. In that very well, that golden light, that beautiful waterfall flowing down through the whole body. Hearing yourself and the conscious yourself through the bodies this time, mind this time, heart. Connecting with that inner peace, seeing the totality of experiences for you right now. Gratitude to yourself and to this body. Lying down, stood, feeling the fingers and the toes when you're ready. Take a big breath in and out. Gently to your side, 
side, so you really need to be the floor, feel straight up back. Splash. You might bring one hand to the belly, one hand to your heart. Hands into prayer, drop to your heart, the inner and outer worlds, upper and lower worlds with the one arm to vibrate through the body. Inhale fully. Oh. Gently bowing your head. You touch the fingers up to the third eye. Come gently to your lips. Close your heart. Come gently forwards and down to the earth, round your arms. And then whenever you're ready, gently bring yourself back upright. And notice how you're feeling. <laughs> Sorry, such a booby top. <laughs> Everyone feeling good. Whitney, do you feel good? Clary, you feel good. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. The ligaments feel very relaxed now. Yeah, good. More space, more space in the body. I was going to ask you, Nadine, for um, the midwife says that my baby has been kind of hanging in this bridge position for the past probably two months. Um, I don't think he or she is, uh, is moving much within the womb. Uh, and I've been doing the, you know, the inversions of the couch, all that's been baby stuff. Um, any, I guess, other advice or should I just chill out until week 36 and see what happens then? Or? No, it should be no. productive for sure. Have you, you read that part of the book? Welcome, Sammy. Um, that talks about breach and transverse and posterior. So the yoga protocol similar to what we've done now. Um, which part of the book? Which book? Malposition, the she births book. Oh, the she births book, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, homeopathy, acupuncture, chiropractics. Doing those three, all of them, is really, really important. So, I mean, I have like the big guns um, that those babies in Balmain, it's 250 bucks a session. And he does it energetically. It's pretty wild to watch it. Kevin Farrow at AccuEnergetics. And he just puts his hands and he gets the amniotic fluid moving and the babies rotate around. Not every baby, but some, a lot, the majority. It's pretty amazing. Um, takes about, you know, anywhere from 20 to 90 minutes. Um, but I would do the acupuncture and the chiropractic, but Cairo probably first. Have you got a good chiropractor? Do you know Alice? No, I don't know, but I've signed up for one just here in, at the junction um, for this. Okay, on the Schubert's list that you'll see, there's Polly Wilkie, there's Alice Nguyen, um, there's the health space ones, there's lots of good ones. Um, Kelly's on leave, I think. So yeah, there's lots of really good ones. Craniosacral, really good craniosacral person. So you just want the pelvis to be kind of opened, uh, Webster technique, um, plus some acupuncture. To okay. follow, and the homeopathy pulsatilla, 30C. You can get that from like the Health Emporium, I think, or there's some homeopaths listed, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good. Go for it. 
Thank you. But otherwise, is it possible to give birth, vaginal birth to a baby with a, in the British position? There, yeah, you can. You need to go to talk to Professor Andrew Bissett, who runs the Breach Clinic at the Royal Hospital for Women. Okay. Yeah, you need to talk to the midwives and ask for a referral to go and meet him. I mean, I can give you his number. He's very good like that. But just ask girls first. Um, yeah. You okay. can, but there's like a lot of factors involved. Yeah, that he would work out with you and you'd make that decision together for sure. Okay. Yeah, so give it all a go and see how it goes. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome, my love. Have a great night. Yes. Bye, everybody. See you. Thank Bye. you.